transhumanism, is this the, could this be the end of humanity? Professor Lambert's Consus theologian, uh, professor says, in our earlier work entitled Metahumanism, Dehumanization, Artificial Intelligence, Problems for a Looming Gloomy Reality, we analyze the modern phenomenon of metahumanism and artificial intelligence, presenting and commenting on the rapid developments in personal and social level. We pointed out the dramatic effects of the enslavement of the modern world to machines, the deification of technology and the degradation of the human mind in relation to artificial intelligence. And we noted humanity utilizing the possibilities of the technological development of recent years attempts to give modern man superhuman capabilities beyond the powers of his nature, essentially altering it, creating a new type of man, the superman of technology. The worst thing is that it's not simply about further technological development, but about the creation of a new anthropology, quote unquote, with unpredictable effects on man and society. Through the possibilities of technology, modern man attempts to change his ontology itself, to intervene in human nature, to fix it, to endow it with physical and mental capabilities beyond its physical capabilities. And this is how the meta-man is created. A human being with superhuman capabilities, obviously marked the end, marking the end of man, as nature gave birth to him, and necessarily of humanity as we have known this until now. Specialists in the field of anthropologists, anthropology relate the emergence of the meta-man, or as some call this homo technicus, technological man, with the end of homo sapiens, superhuman, and the entrance of humanity, as written by author Daniel Estolin in The Age of Human Deconstruction, where new technologies enable genetic alterations, bionic replacements, and artificial nano-like neural connections. We are not simply evolving a new species, we're becoming creators of a new form of life that combines material science with biology. It's understandable that Homo technicus attempts once again, this time in a dynamic way, through the possibilities of technology, to realize the primordial demonic life of self-deification become as God, Genesis 3.5. Appointed by the works of his hands, he boasts that he is now God. Homo technicus identifies with the soulless machines, becomes identical with them, having a cold psyche, like those where there is no space for faith in God, respect for fellow human beings, respect for divine creation. And not only emotions, but also free will ceases to exist in him, functioning as a program computer, and this for his good, not to mistake with his imperfect will. But by taking away from him this basic element, which defines him as a human being and differentiates him from the rest of biodiversity, removes him as a human being and classifies him as a robot. It doesn't take a special skill to see that the future of humanity looks not just bleak but nightmarish, which will be determined by two main factors, the automation of all human activities and the robotization of man. Based on this belief consideration of the modern tragic reality and guided by Christian anthropology, we can understand the self-destructive course of the modern world. Through the rapid spread of ideas, humanity has been imbued to the bone marrow by these movements, which shape modern social reality and social becoming. Modern man is convinced that robotization and automation is now a one-way street, and all he has to do is come to terms with this new reality. Those who know from the course an alteration of humanist models in the history of mankind can understand that transhumanism is a natural evolution of the European of enlightenment, of aesthetic humanism, which is the first attempt of man's autonomy from God. And we would say that transhumanism, quote unquote, is the completion, the triumph of atheistic humanism, the herald of the second death of God, and unfortunately the dehumanization of man. 
the machines are coming to take the place of God and man. Within the surrounding climate, the contemporary harsh reality can be understood. Never in the past has man been so selfish, selfish and hostile to his fellow man. He no, long, no long, longer needs it because he has replaced it with various machines, personal computers, mobiles, tablets, etc. He does not need the discussion, the dialogue, the other's opinion, because he is satisfied with the company of the cold screen and is satisfied by, the, by discussing with the data of the electronic device. A worrying example of this apparent isolation of young people who are absorbed, bent over their mobile screens, completely cut off from their social surroundings. Real dramas develop in families when some parents attempt to deprive as a form of punishment children's involvement with electronic devices and their connection to the internet. There's also the even more tragic side of the modern world. The daily news is its witness. Indiscriminate murders, crimes, femicides, infanticides, pedophilia, seductions, abductions of minors, robbery, theft, frauds, destruction of property due to revenge, breakup of families, merciless abandonment of children, adultery, etc., make up the nightmarish mosaic of our society today. And still, the numerous military conflicts with particular severity and a tendency for global destruction with nuclear weapons portend a nightmarish future. Human life has become a very cheap affair, perhaps even cheaper than that of animals. A very disturbing aspect of this social deviation is the ever-increasing violence against young children. Childhood innocence has been lost and vengeful rage has flooded their souls to the point of annihilating the other children. First, I taught the American society and youth where I thought uh, the completely unnecessary gunmen invaded schools now lost humanity is due to the degradation of man from personality to individual, uh, individuality. The apotheosis of the ego gives birth to the contempt of the other. The inner vacuum of values is filled with dishonors. Our society is unworthy of men, fit only for beasts, dominated by animal instincts and the rule of the strongest. We became enslaved to our passions and lost our humanity. We entrenched ourselves in our self-centeredness. We ceased to be persons and became individuals, hence autonomous beings. We abandoned the cultivation of the face and became promoters of individualism, which feeds on selfishness and serves the passions. Those identified with or bad self, the old, the fallen, the one doomed to die and kill us with it. The other man is no longer the brother of modern man, the image of God, the reflection of his own face in the face of his fellow man, but his antagonist who seeks his individual happiness and is therefore considered the, his enemy. It is his hell, the other is my hell, proclaimed the notorious atheist nihilist, nihilist Sartre, Sartre, the so-called patriarch of nihilism, the preacher of the death not only of God but also of man. The weak must be annihilated, declared the equally tragic German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, because he hinders the supposed progress of humanity. These are the representatives, theorists of the European Enlightenment, of humanism without God, which in essence abolishes every humanistic ideal because it sacrifices it to individualism, to the deification of the ego, which is opposite to the self and abolishes the equality of human persons. In our current alien era, the era of the deification of the individual ego, we have returned to the Roman era, where the Romans said, homo homini lupus, man is to another man a bloodthirsty wolf. Transhumanism, as a tragic symptom of our times, is nothing more than the natural evolution of apostate man who abhors the freedom that God gives him and likes the slavery of sin the tyranny of his passions and the alienation of his fellow men. It's an offshoot of the demonic promises of atheistic European humanism for the violent removal from God and therefore from the fellow man who is replaced by the cold and impersonal machines, the mute and silent prophesied St. Cosmas of Italos of Northern Greece.
the question arises, what should be our attitude in front of this new gloomy social reality? Do we realize that this modern world form of inhumanity has nothing to do with our Christian beliefs? Can we realize that this mechanized world is a triumph of apostasy and rebellion against God, realizing the primordial demonic lie of the deification of man without God? Our Lord Jesus Christ instructs us to be the light of the world and to shine, illuminating as a city built on a mountain and reflecting the light of God before men that they may see our good works and glorify your Father, him in heaven. Matthew 5.13 In other words, he asks us to separate ourselves from this nothingness, uh, this unworthy society to be considered human, and to show by our example and our personal testimony its other side, the genuine and true one, we are called to guard and save lost humanity. To resist our mechanization, saving our authentic nature, to attain salvation as the body of Christ, united organically with our brothers, having as a motto, brother under brother, helping as a fortified and high city, valid until a kingdom is established. Proverbs 18 and 19. This I've translated for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.